them have the similar type blood. When you doubt us, that's when we rise. So he had us, you know, they doubted him. He went to the top, you know, took a couple of bumps, and went away for a while. He's trying, he's looking real good. Yeah, he's looking yoked. Yeah, so I know, I know he's gonna come back with vengeance. Huh? As UFC superstar Conor McGregor edges closer to his highly anticipated comeback, some doubt if the notorious could still fight his way back to the top. However, NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal isn't one of them. According to Shaq, he sees the athlete version of himself in McGregor, the type of competitor who always delivers when being written off. Me and him have the similar type blood. When you doubt us, that's when we rise, O'Neal told Inside Fighting about the former UFC two-division champion. Shaq knows a true champ when he sees one. McGregor will be coaching his own team in the upcoming new season of UFC's The Ultimate Fighter. At the end of the season, the Irish mixed martial arts superstar will take on Michael Chandler in his first UFC fight after being sidelined due to a gruesome leg injury in 2021. John Jones claims Cyril Gaon won't get back up from his takedowns. John Jones is oozing confidence ahead of his comeback at UFC 285. After three years away, the former UFC light heavyweight champion will return at a new weight class for a new throne. Jones will challenge Cyril Gaon for the vacant heavyweight title on March 4th in Las Vegas, Nevada. The well-rounded Bones has no doubt he'll beat Gaon, no matter where the fight goes, especially should it reach the ground. If we end up kickboxing the whole night, I do believe I'll win on the feet. If I end up wrestling him, I'll win on the ground. Any way the fight plays out, I'll be ready. Jones told RMC Sport, take a look. Any way it plays out, I'll be ready. I'll be ready, you know, if, if we end up kickboxing the whole night, I do believe I'll win on the feet. Uh, if, if I end up wrestling him, I'll, I'll win on the ground. Any way the fight plays out, I'll be ready. I do feel like I have a major grappling advantage in this fight, for sure. I watched Serial uh, lose to Francis and Ghana. Um, Francis was able to take him down, hold him down, control him. I do believe that if I get to when I get to the ground, he won't get back up. John Jones names his top five UFC fighters of all time. And more on John Jones. The former UFC light heavyweight champion has revealed who he feels are the five greatest UFC fighters ever. Jones is arguably the greatest UFC fighter of all time defeating some of the all-time greats during his previous run as light heavyweight champion. A heavyweight title win would further his legacy and place him amongst the all-time best. While Jones' place in history is arguably undisputed, the fighters who should be included in the discussion are up for debate. During a recent interview with RMC Sport, Jones revealed his top five list. Take a look. My top five, let's see here. I, I would say, uh, if I'm allowed, I would say myself, uh, Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, Khabib Magomedov, and uh, Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo, those are my favorites at least. Despite his previous comments about Khabib Nurmagomedov's legacy, Jones feels Nurmagomedov deserves a spot near the top. Jones has noted Nurmagomedov's abrupt retirement as an asterisk of his GOAT case. Conor McGregor claims he's going to slice through Michael Chandler. After months of anticipation, Conor McGregor is finally set to make his return to the UFC with a coaching position in the upcoming season of The Ultimate Fighter. The Notorious will be coaching against Michael Chandler, who he will then face in a yet-to-be-disclosed weight class fight. In an interview with Mac Likes Oscar Willis, McGregor expressed his interest in seeing Chandler coach but questioned his technical ability, stating that he is more of an athlete than a technical mixed martial artist. He's more of an athlete type of a guy then, you know, than a technical martial artist you know. I know he's got some skills in the wrestling department. Then, he has got some skills overall, but as far as like, the small finer details, I'm not sure. McGregor said, then he went on and gave his thoughts on what he thinks is going to happen in the fight. Listen closely. I, I actually, I you know, like Michael. I had a good little buzz with him yesterday. I have no, no issues with him at all. I think he's a good fighter. Um, I, and, you know, coaching against him, I'm interested to see his coaching style. He's more of an athlete type of a guy than a, you know, than a technical martial artist. You know, I know he's got some skills in the wrestling department and he's got some skills overall. 
But as far as like the in, 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 like the small finer details, I just don't think. I'm not sure. I'm interested to see. You know, I, I'm happy where I'm at. And, you know, so it, it'll be an interesting one to go against them before I go against them. Yeah, people are fine. Uh, I think I'm just gonna slice through. I think I'm a little too slicey for for, for, <laughs> for, for him than, than than anyone else he's fought. A little too snappy and whippy, and I think I'll slice through. Daniel Cormier highlights problems with Makachev versus Volkanovski too. Former UFC light heavyweight and heavyweight champion Daniel Cormier does not want to see an immediate rematch between Islam Makachev and Alexander Volkanovsky. On a recent edition of DC and RC, Daniel Cormier gave his take on Makachev and Volkanovsky running it back soon. Despite potential interest in the bout, Cormier was quick to highlight that the great needs to face interim featherweight champion Yair Rodriguez next. Makachev, meanwhile, should ideally take on the winner of Charles Oliveira versus Ben Neil Dariush at UFC 288. Islam's got work to do in his own weight class, and so does Alexander Volkanovsky. Cormier said, listen closely. Islam's got work to do in his own weight class, and so does Alexander Volkanovsky. Volkanovsky owes it to Yair Rodriguez to go and give him an opportunity to try to become the undisputed yes. champion of the world. And I don't know if it's fair to Benil Dariush if he beats Charles Oliveira to not get his chance to fight for the lightweight championship of the world. Whilst, and this is the danger in super fights, because you get a close super fight, and people are clamoring to see it again, when in reality we have two divisions that need the champions back in order to uh, really give us a little clarity. Jake Paul says Nate Diaz is ready and will get booked ASAP after Tommy Fury fight. Jake Paul still has to fight Tommy Fury this weekend, but he already has his next opponent in mind. According to the YouTuber turned boxer, his next fight will likely be a big one against UFC superstar and new free agent Nate Diaz. I think Nate Diaz's team is ready. I'm getting through Sunday against Tommy Fury, and we're gonna line that one up ASAP I think that's next, Paul said on the MMA Hour. Let's hear it from the man himself. They're ready. They're ready. I'm, I'm getting through Sunday, and we're going to line that one up ASAP. One. You feel like that's next? Yeah, I, I, I think that's next. I think that's what the fans want, um, and that, that's who I want. You know, there's been a lot of talk back and forth. We've said our stuff, uh, but it, it's time to get down to business. Paul is 6-0 and zero in boxing and will be a lot younger at 26 years old, while the 37-year-old Diaz is 21 and 13 in mixed martial arts. Before any of that can happen though, Paul still has to handle business this Sunday, when he finally faces the 8-0 Fury in Saudi Arabia. Would you be excited to watch Jake Paul versus Nate Diaz? Write down your thoughts in the comments section. That's all for today's video. If you want to know the latest UFC news, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications bell and click the like button so you don't miss any details about the upcoming fights. Thanks for watching. See you soon.